Hi everyone, thanks very much for uh, being here. Um, I'm Anastasios Nanos. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, interoperable hardware acceleration for serverless computing. So a quick overview of uh, the presentation. Uh, we're going to talk about serverless computing, um, about our framework, um, uh, which we call VXL, and we enable interoperable application hardware acceleration. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, the integration with uh, serverless frameworks, and uh, if there's time, we can do a short demo. So we are a small research company. We are uh, doing virtualization, uh, library OSs, unikernels, containers, container runtimes. We have a mixed uh, academic and industry background and we're based in the UK and Greece. Uh, we also have another talk uh, tomorrow about uh, using unikernels for serverless. So uh, essentially, serverless computing is um, uh, about managed infrastructure orchestrator, orchestration uh, by service providers. It, it offers effortless scaling, it, uh, allows the user to focus on business logic and to deploy their code without provisioning the infrastructure. Uh, so the, the code in a serverless computing uh, example is deployed as a function with uh, all its dependencies. Um, there is event-driven execution. Uh, the billing model is what it should be, actual resource usage versus uh, getting billed for idle resources. And uh, it offers stateless execution oriented to microservices and uh, actions that uh, uh, are spawned upon a trigger. Um, serverless computing frameworks are often are deployed in, uh, in cloud infrastructures. Uh, however, this mode of execution seems useful for edge workloads as well. So, for, for instance, you can do ML inference, image inference for, uh, at, at the edge, at small devices, with accelerators and stuff like that. Um, it's, uh, serverless computing frameworks are currently backed by, by containers. Containers present some multi-tenancy issues, mainly re with regards to security and uh, leaks of, uh, of data, either input or useful data in the, um, in the container, like models or stuff like that. Um, the solution from service providers at the moment is either managed, isolated uh, infrastructure or using sandboxed uh, containers inside VMs. So they, 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 they try to, to isolate the execution of a container using hardware extensions. The issue with VMs is that uh, it is hard to get hardware acceleration or device uh, access in general uh, to the VM. At the moment, what, what, is, what is being done uh, with regards to this issue is that uh, you either use the, the whole device on a VM, you, so it's a, a, a single, uh, um, only one user, only one VM can use this, uh, this, this device. You can do the mediated pass-through, which is um, um, some kind of software emulation or software hardware emulation um, to, to pass through functions uh, of the device to the VM. You could do the, the para-virtualization approach, which is kind of easy, but it requires vendor support both um, you know, on the host and in the guest. And um, lastly, you could do API remoting. Uh, one good example is Arcuda, uh, that you can intercept and forward these calls, the CUDA calls for NVIDIA, for instance, um, to, the, uh, to, to the device, to the host. So what, what, what we think, actually, what we figured is that what, are, what is the bare minimum for workloads to access accelerators? So in, in a serverless function that does image classification, uh, the only thing that the workload needs to specify is what kind of classification they need, the kind of model, and the, the, the parameters for this model, and the input. So why, why, why do we need the whole device on the, on the guest? Or why do we need to specify CUDA calls or, 
OpenCL calls. So what we built is actually a framework that decouples the function call from the hardware-specific Im implementation. So VXL uh, has a static API and a user-defined API. It has a couple of plugins or several plugins, which is glue code uh, of the API calls to the hardware implementation, to the, to the, to the actual code that's running on the, on the hardware accelerator. Um, a, a mapper, um, a multiplexer that maps these API calls to the plugins, and uh, a couple of custom plugins that um, we have designed to enable VM and remote execution. To see uh, a bit more into how VXL works, we can look at the stack, at the, at the software stack. So this is the, the mapper, the, the core um, part of uh, the VXL library. Um, we have on, on, the, on, the, um, on the top, we have uh, the static user API. So we've, for this example, we've chosen the um, image inference user API, where we have several uh, of the functions that we would like to implement, such as uh, image classification, image segmentation, uh, object detection, blah, blah, blah. Um, on, the, on the bottom side of, um, of this figure, we can see the, the plugins. These plugins are uh, the, the glue code. So uh, the, the JSON inference plugins, uh, plugin, for instance, implements some or all of these API functions, which means that for a specific function call for image classify, it provides um, the, um, the actual function call to the hardware implementation. Sorry. Which is shown here. So the, these um, red uh, boxes are actually outside of the Excel. So these, these are actual uh, hardware, um, uh, actual software implementations of, uh, the, of the functions that we have defined. So the, the Dusty NV JSON inference is a GitHub repo from NVIDIA implementing several uh, API calls like the ones on top. So the, the JSON inference plugin, the only thing that it does, it, is, it, it's, it, it bridges the API call on, on top to the hardware implementation, to the actual code implementation on, on, the, on the bottom. So for an application that calls this image classify API call of VXL, the first thing is that it, it, it reaches the user API, it goes into the multiplexer, it, depending on what the user has uh, chosen or at what can be chosen at, at runtime, it selects the current plugin, which is the JSON inference plugin, and it's, this plugin executes calls the actual hardware implementation, the JSON inference implementation for the image classify function. Another, fun another application could call the same API call, but at runtime, the user or the systems admin could uh, have uh, uh, selected another plugin, which is an NPU image inference implementation. The, and it, it would call the other uh, hardware implementation on an AM logic chip, let's say, on an AM logic uh, NPU. And the same stands for, for, for another API call. The, the pose estimate, which is again on the, on the JSON inference plugin. So we've seen how, how, how the user API works. It's just a simple mapper. It calls, but the user application calls um, a function. This function gets mapped to the relevant plugin, and the plugin calls the actual implementation. Now, the, um, having existing applications, though, uh, without having to change their code, ported uh, into VXL, um, could be more interesting. So what we do is that we, 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 we libify the application. An example, again, with image classification um, is shown here. So we have an application that does image classification through a, um, a TensorFlow image inference program. 
what, what we do is that we, we split that to the function call and the actual implementation of, uh, of the image classification operation. So we have uh, um, a simple function call on top and the, uh, the, all the um, all the hardware-specific stuff, the, the TensorFlow graphing, model loading, and all that stuff on the on the on the bottom, and we we port that to VXL using a um, generic operation. We call it in uh, in the framework. It's um, an actually uh, it's a, it's an API remoting thing. So we we pack the arguments and the function call of the of the symbol that we want to to call. Uh, we transfer it through the Excel, and we unpack the arguments and execute it and, and call uh, the, the relevant symbol with its arguments on the, um, on the shared library. For example, we can see a, a, a vector add operation. We have three arrays, two, two inputs, and one output. Um, we, 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 we define a structure in order to get the arguments uh, moved. So we have, uh, we, we serialize the uh, arguments, essentially. So we, we, we define the shared library, the actual hardware implementation, the symbol that's going to be called, the vector add thing, and then we add um, the, the relevant parameters on the structure. And we just call VXL exec. On, on the other part, on the, on the shared object that has the actual hardware implementation, we have to unpack these arguments. So the original vector add that has three arguments, four arguments, two inputs, one output, and the dimension of the arrays, uh, now becomes um, uh, compatible with the prototype of the unpacking, and we dereference these arguments from the packed uh, process that we uh, mentioned. So what is left is to actually call the, this function, which is done through the exec plugin. And the, the process is this simple. We just dereference the, the symbol and call the function pointer with the relevant arguments. Now, this, this could be useful um, on, a, on, a, on, a, on a VM environment, on a, on a remote execution environment, because on the, on the same host, it doesn't make much sense. It could make sense on um, interoperable hardware, so we have the same binary and several uh, shared objects that could be called on different uh, hosts. But what's really interesting is how you can run it through a VM. So this, this figure shows the, the process for the VM execution. We have the, the application. We pack the arguments. We use. Uh, the VXL GenOp operation, and we have the, um, the um, uh, Evrit.io plugin, which implements uh, every API operation. The exec, the image classify, I mean, the, the user API and, the, and the, the static API and the user extendable API. So this, this plugin forwards the execution, all, all this, this the, the call and the arguments uh, to another VXL instance running on the host, which in, in turn calls the actual hardware implementation. So the original application that we have libified is able to be executed on a VM without direct access to the hardware. Now, th that's a Virtio plugin implemented as a kernel module and a plugin in VXL. Um, we have the same implementation using a VSOC, so it's over sockets, so it's over um, virtual uh, VAF VSOC part and uh, the um, uh, generic um, TCP socket. In, in order to have, so in the, in the VSOC case, we have um, a user space program that just intercepts, gets the, um, a, a server, let's say, that gets the requests and uh, calls the VXL API, the VXL RT, the core of our framework. Um, now, to, to be able to use that on a serverless environment, we need some kind of orchestration framework, and we need to make sure that the agent 
in, term, in, in case of the VSOC or the hypervisor is the, is the correct hypervisor with the backend and the root of S of the VM is the, has got the VirtIO module and stuff like that. So we've uh, integrated VXL in uh, Kata containers and um, uh, we've done both implementations for the patched hypervisor, both Chemo and Firecracker and with the VSOC approach, which should be uh, hypervisor agnostic, but we've, um, we've only tried Firecracker and Chemo on that. Um, and we've added this uh, downstream Kata implementation to a Kubernetes cluster uh, running open fast, which is a serverless framework, uh, open source, pretty popular. So the, uh, the, the open fast control plane is running on a, on a simple, um, on, a, on a container through run C, but the functions uh, are being executed as um, with a new runtime class, which is the custom runtime class with our downstream Kata containers implementation. And all these functions uh, on, the, on the right are generic uh, containers that uh, can use uh, hardware accelerators through VXL, either with VSOC or directly with um, interfacing with, uh, with, with the Virtaio case. Um, don't think I have much time. Um, in terms of, of the performance, um, we have uh, several measurements uh, both micro benchmarks and end-to-end um, uh, -end applications. We've tried uh, um, image classification. Um, we've tried three implementations uh, from the NVIDIA Jetson inference uh, framework. The, we have implemented a simple uh, inference example in, uh, in the TensorFlow framework, both in Rust and C. And we've also tried um, the, the OpenVINO framework from Intel using the Intel Neural Compute Sticks. Uh, the, um, the setup that we used uh, is Chemo and Firecracker VMs, Virtaion VSO plugins on a simple home use GPU, uh, the, um, the Intel Neural Co Compute Stick on an Intel uh, i5, and on Jetson Nano and X uh, Xavier AGX. Um, as we can see in this graph, it, this is a, the execution time normalized to native, so one is native, over one is the, the overhead of the execution. Um, on the left side, you can see the x86 numbers, on the right side, the ARM numbers. Uh, the light bars are the Virtaio case, the dark bars are the VSOP case. So with an exception of the ARM case and um, VSOC, um, the overhead is less than 5%. And these, these numbers are for, for the Firecracker uh, hypervisor. Um, we don't have the chemo plotted in this presentation. Um, so what we can see is that the, the, the overhead is pretty low, uh, which is ex expected, as the, the, the only overhead um, associated with the whole uh, execution flow is the, 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 the transfer of the data that we need to uh, copy from the guest to the host uh, in order to reach the accelerator. Um, the programming uh, uh, framework and language support for VXL, the core framework is written in C. We have plugins in C, C++, and Rust. Um, essentially, we can write um, any plugin as a, as a, 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 we can write on any language as long as you, we can compile it as a shared object. We have bindings for the user API in C, uh, in Rust, and, uh, and Python. Uh, the VXL agent, the, the server that runs and supports the VSOC operation is written in, uh, in Rust. And um, regarding the user extensible um, API, we have wrapper functions that, that can facilitate the, um, the, the porting of existing applications. So we, we have a couple of stubs 
both for uh, for the user part and the and the hardware uh, specific part. Um, in terms of system support, as uh, we mentioned, we have tried Firecracker, we have tried Kemu, we have uh, backends for both these um, hypervisors for the Virtio case. For the Visoc case, it's hypervisor agnostic as long as the as the hypervisor supports VSOC. Um, in terms of uh, orchestration and um, runtimes, we support Kubernetes through Kata containers. Uh, we have tried OpenFAS, works fine. Uh, we have also support for uh, Unikernels. Um, we have tried Unicraft, Rampran. We're in the process of uh, trying OSV. Um, in terms of hardware framework support, we can use anything as long as it is able to be compiled as a shared object and that it, it, it makes sense to be executed in this kind of um, use case. Um, we have uh, the JSON inference and, uh, and the TensorFlow stuff, uh, the TensorRT, OpenVINO. We, can, we, we have used some examples in OpenCL for the vector add. Uh, example, for instance, we haven't run anything more uh, complicated than that, and we, we can also support CUDAs. It is uh, pretty straightforward. Um, we have used uh, data center GPUs like uh, um, NVIDIA T4. Um, we have used Edge GPUs, the Jetson, Nano, Xavier's, this kind of stuff. We have used the Google Coral, uh, Myriadex, the Intel Neural Compute Stick. Um, a custom CADAS AM logic NPU. So it, 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 it seems that um, as long as you can uh, compile a, a plugin as a shared object, you can run anything you want. Um, what we, we, we are uh, aiming with, uh, with this framework is to be able to have um, a single application binary that can use hardware acceleration on several um, hardwares, hardware implementations or hardware devices like Edge, like an, an, an application that could scale out from the Edge to the cloud and, uh, and back. Uh, it's currently work in progress. Uh, we, are, we are planning to uh, extend uh, the API and, um, and the hardware supported. Uh, we would like to add a lot of intelligence in the, in the core library. Um, and we would like to add some kind of marketplace for the models, for inference, or for, for binary blobs that the user could just pick and use um, on the fly. It's open source. Uh, you can check out the code and the plugins. There is also a tutorial-like walkthrough that you can run your own uh, application on, on VXL through Firecracker. Um, I would also like to mention that this work is partly funded by um, EU research funds. Um, thanks very much. I think we have some time to show the demo, right? Do I, do I have time? Perfect. So it's a pre-recorded demo. We have a Kubernetes cluster with, um, with a node that has a GPU installed. The GPU is a, is a home-use GPU. It's an NVIDIA RTX. Um, we have an open fast installation. This is the control plane running on several nodes in this cluster. Um, on the on the left side, there's a simple um, a UI that we created to showcase what we're doing. We have uh, an open fast function, uh, which essentially calls the image classification operation um, without direct access to the hardware. It is a, um, uh, a kata container uh, booted on a, on a Firecracker VM. So there, there's no access to, to a GPU. So we can select an image, clear class. 
we can see that there's GPU access. We have NVTOP on, uh, on the bottom. So uh, we, can, we can check out the logs of these, um, of these functions. So another example is a dog. We can see that there's we can see that there's there's movement on the, on the logs for the Kubernetes functions. We can see that the the result is this. It uh, there's a classification tag and the and the confidence of the of the model. These are ImageNet models, pretty much default for the JSON inference implementation. Um, Yeah, more images and uh, logs on the uh, on the open fast functions. Trying to resize the NV top thing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, more images. So. Um, what we've also built and we're trying to, it's also work in progress, is uh, trying to have a unikernel execution um, as, a, as a function. So um, in, the, in, the, in the open fast case, um, the way that this thing works is that there's a, there's a watchdog process that gets a request, spawns a, um, a process, does the, whatever the function needs, and returns the results. So what we've done for now is that we, through the fwatchdog process, we spawn a unikernel, we do what we do, and we return the result. So this is kind of like a hack to get a unikernel uh, implement the serverless function. What we are working on is getting um, a runtime such as kata containers to spawn a unikernel from a, from a container image directly. But this is for another talk. Uh, so what we've done is this, this hack here. So we have OpenFast, um, the, the F watchdog running as a unikernel, uh, running a unikernel, spawning a unikernel that supports VXL, a hacked unikernel. And we, we just change the, the endpoint. Um, we see the logs, we, we change the endpoint uh, that we post the image there. We change the picture, we have the beer glass again. So we can see that the process is being forked, it gets executed and it actually talks to the hardware. So we can do the, the image classification thing from a unikernel without having to port all the NVIDIA libraries in the unikernel and it works exactly the same as the as the other case we would like to uh, see how how fast it is it should be a lot faster than uh, than the generic case with the vm and all the um, all the bloat stuck there i believe that's from our side thanks very much for for listening I would be more than happy to answer any questions. No, 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 no. The, the the hardware implementation should be should be there, should be there already. So. So you have to compile for the NVIDIA. Yes. Graphics. Yes. So, uh, and and what you call is not uh, what the user writes, what the application uh, calls is the the upper function call, not the, the, the actual hardware implementation. So it's a we 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 abstract the hardware implementation semantically. So the image classification is already there, the hardware implementation is already on the Jetson Nano, on the on the CADAS, uh, on the AM logic chip. It's 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 already there. The user just calls image classify with some parameters. 
they, they, they don't implement the, uh, the function, so you can't, we don't do just-in-time compilation of, uh, for the hardware. Yes, so, so it, 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 it should be installed already on the system by the, by the admin. It's not, it's not the, the user's re responsibility. So think of it like uh, on Amazon Lambda, you have, you have a couple of API calls that you know that can be accelerated. So you would like to do image classification with Google Net, ImageNet, and stuff like that. So it's being offered by the Amazon Lambda service. It's not that you have to write the model or you have to uh, write the, the, the TensorFlow graph and stuff like that. So I, 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 I have an image classification, so I'm bringing it high knowledge. Mm -hmm. And then I compile it for, I don't know, the big data set and then I compile it for the bigger It's the bottom part. So, so this, this image classification algorithm that you have, yeah. you have to libify it. So you, you have to compile it as a shared object, and then you have to pack and unpack the arguments when you call that image classification function. Does it answer your question, or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So maybe a relevant question here, since, as you said, administrators have to install the mm -hmm. uh, option files basically on the server. Do you already have any integration, for example, with Jujio or Polans or whatever? No, 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 no. It's it's yeah, it's 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 uh, actually pretty early in the in the project to to do something like that. We we rely on uh, on the fact that the binaries are already there because there's. An NVIDIA card or uh, or some some other TPU or NPU. So it's 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 it's, a, it's an offering from the from the infrastructure. They, and and the user just picks whatever they they would like to run and run that as a as a as a function. All right. Another relevant question would be is that that multiplexer if I get correctly, it's running in a VM and then this patches via this. Correct. Yes, yeah. exactly. So, so my question is, is it planned or is it um, already possible to offload this to another box? Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. So so there is uh, TCP socket support in the VSOC thing. Uh, we we have to uh, the overhead is, <laughs> of course, related to the to the network. So we, we have tried that in a in a use case where we we had a, um, a Google Coral uh, Mini uh, dev board that we couldn't run KVM on. So we had that in the, in the VXLRT agent, and we called that from x86 and from ARM boards to check the compatibility, the the architecture compatibility. Uh, and it, it worked j just fine, but the Coral Mini board only has Wi-Fi, so it was it was pretty crap. Okay. If there are no more questions, thanks very much. <laughs>